Today's show is all about completing the first steps for this AQS and Accu Quilt Along. So stay tuned and see what we're up to today. Hi quilters, I'm Pam Hiller, AccuQuilts Cutting Expert. I'm Erica Botker, AccuQuilts Creativity Expert. Welcome to part one of the Go Scrappy Log Cabin. Yay, Yay we're excited about this. AQS and AccuQuilt Along series. Today, we're gonna be showing you how to cut and organize your pieces using the Go Log Cabin die. That's right. Plus, we'll have live question and answer throughout the show with AccuQuilt's own community engagement specialist, Miss Emily Kerr here as our in-studio monitor. Mm -hmm. Hello, moderator. Moderator, yes. Or monitor. You How know, are you, Miss Emily? we need a monitor. I will be monitoring and yes. monitoring. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing over there, Sunshine? Doing great, doing great Good. on a happy sunny Wednesday. So. It's a beautiful day in Nebraska. It beautiful. is. All right, quilters, be sure to ask any questions that you might have in the comments section from wherever you stream our show. And then Emily is going to relay them to us. And I feel like the log cabin die is a die that many of our quilters yes. have not used. Right. And they might have lots of questions. So just put them yes. in the questions and we'll answer them. That's right. So in case you missed it, we kind of kicked off this little quilt along when I invaded Miss yes. Pam's AccuQuilt Live show on March 22nd. And we went over the fabrics needed, the, mm -hmm. the pattern, the supplies, what you're gonna need to get started and to kind of give you all a heads up before today so you could be ready. And we also talked about colorways and personalizing, mm -hmm. so um, it's great. So it's really beneficial that you watch uh, before you start the Go uh, Scrappy Log Cabin, watch that show. Right. And be sure to check it out on AccuQuilt's video gallery, Facebook, or YouTube pages. That's right. Now, I've also written a blog. I wrote a blog to introduce it and with right. all the rotary cutting instructions. And you can find that on our website under the blog. Actually, there's three ways that that covers that you can make this project. Okay. You can use the Go Log Cabin Die by Leslie Main, which yes. is a block on board. That's what we're going to be using. That's what we're going to use. You can use the one and a half inch strip cutter because our strips here are going to finish to one inch. They're going to they're right. one one inch, one and a half inch wide. Or you can and then cut down the length of your logs. Right. with a rotary cutter, or you can get the whole thing with a rotary cutter. Right. So those dimensions are gonna be in that introductory blog, and then AQS had an introductory blog on the 29th, so you can check that out as well. And a huge welcome to all of you who are new to our Quilts Along. That's We're super right. excited to start. All right, so before we start cutting our fabric, first let's show them our blocks. Yes. And then let's show them our, our die. die. Okay. okay, so we're gonna start with blocks. Okay, just so you know, we could have finished this uh, two weeks ago. We are so excited. These are so darn fun to sew. We, Eric and I both have sewn a couple of blocks together, we have. three or four, and it's just very methodic. You can just sit yes. and chain piece for days and press and chain piece. Press and so when you're feeling nice. a little stressed, you can turn on a movie and just make log cabin yes. blocks. So yeah. this is my block. Um, I had some in my stash some half yard cuts of batiks. Yes. And so I, ha I had to go to the fabric store, darn, darn. and darn buy the background fabric. But we start, I started in my stash. Now I started with some yardage here. So I, yes. I've i got um, two thirds of a yard cuts of fabric right. and then my background fabric. And I decided to go with the dark background versus the light. And you can see that it's got a tiny little print in it. Super cute. Um, this is all from Corey Yoder's uh, Cozy Up line. Yes, for we Moda. Love Corey. So Corey, we love this. This is one of my all time favorite fabric lines, right. I think. Okay. I have so many projects out of it, but I had to get still more. Oh, so many. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at this die. I'm yes. gonna move this real quick here and we'll get a nice good overhead shot. Okay, so first of all, this is what we call a block and board or a bob die, mm -hmm. which means it has all the shapes you need to make the log cabin blocks and you could make it 
five inches or six inches or seven inches big, you really get to determine how big your finished yes. block is. Yes. Which is the beauty of this particular die. That's right. Now, we wanna talk about that these are lengthwise blades through here, which means you need to have, we're gonna cut width of fabric right. lengthwise blades. Don't because we have these crosswise blades right. on the ends, and that's how this differs from a regular strip die, because strip dies don't right. have any crosswise blades. Right, and we have blades here, and then look, there's a blade here, and here, and here, and here. So this is shape one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's really important to go eight, nine, nine 10, ten, 11, 12, okay? Yeah. And um, don't use jelly rolls because jelly rolls cut are cut with the fabric and the grain's gonna be long. The grain is wrong. gonna be wrong. You're only gonna be able to make a two inch block. And you're also gonna waste an inch of fabric because right. jelly rolls are two and a half inches. Right. These are one and a half inches. So strips. if you were to, let me grab one real quick. Here, we've got some on the set here. Oh, okay, so. wandering off. If you're, sorry, <laughs> I'm back. Um, so this is a jelly roll. These are two and a half inch strips of fabric that have been all wound up together. And, and you think, oh, this will be great because they all go together, right? Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is that if you, unless you want to make a really chunky log cabin quilt, which I have done and I love, if you, cutting these down to, from two and a half to one and a half, you're, you're losing an inch of fabric yeah. on every one. Right. And what's the use of using um, a jelly roll if you're gonna waste an inch? That's of it? right, okay. I agree. All right, now Erica's gonna talk about, um, our, so here's the pattern we're gonna use. Yes, now no matter how you are making, cutting your, your pattern, how, how you're cutting it, you wanna download the free pattern from AccuQuilt.com. Right. And the reason is you're still, this is where those assembly directions are gonna live. Right. So Here, the cutting we'll directions, you can find those for the other alternate methods, but you are still going to need these instructions and this diagram to show you how to put your logs together to build your blocks. And did you not have this pattern open every time? Every you time I sew it, yeah, I have it sitting there. Sure I have another I'm... copy of it over here, yeah, as a matter of fact. I think this is your copy. I stole it. Okay, so um, it's important to download the free patterns available at AccuQuilt.com. Now, Erica is going to follow the pattern because she is a pattern follower. Someone has to do it. And these actually make 11 inch blocks. That's right, that's right. So right. my blocks that I'm making finish to 11 inches. So she's not gonna use I'm not gonna use strip. that 12th log nope. in the background and I won't need the 11 or 12 in my fabric and my pattern fabrics. Mm -hmm. And right now you're thinking, what, what? It will show you, it'll make right. more sense. Right, Okay. All right, so that's how Erica's gonna do it. Okay. All right. And then we've got a look at that quilt. Let's take a look at the oh, quilt. Oh, yes, here, I will hold So it. this is the quilt that's gonna match the pattern as it is written for the Scrappy Star so love Log this Cabin. Quilt. Can you see? So I'll hold it up really big. He's got it here. So it's 16 blocks. And you can see how it makes the star. And this is just scrappy goodness right here. Oh, so much scrappy goodness. And a big chunky six inch finished border around the outside. And then look at the back quilters. So this is really fun because they've taken the scraps from the front and used them to piece the back. Yeah. Which is so cool. Right, because I feel like so many of us are gonna use our stash. Right, right, and we're gonna this. have bits and pieces left over, and mm -hmm. at a certain point, you've seen enough of those scraps, and you're ready to use them up and move on. Yes. So tell us about what you, my rogue friend, are going to be doing. So I, being the rogue friend that I am, I'm actually going to make my blocks 12 inches mm -hmm. big, and 12 inch finished, and We'll talk about which um, log I don't have to use, I don't have to cut, but um, I am going to add more blocks. Yes. So I'm gonna walk back here and kind of talk about this because this okay. is kind of 
the general layout for mine. Now there's no pattern for this on the IQ Quilt website. And yes, I will write a pattern, I promise. Okay, so I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna sew four across and six down. So I'm gonna make a total of 24 12 inch blocks. So basically it's the same pattern. Uh huh. Except you're using 12 inch blocks for yours. Yes. And the, this one actually uses the 11. It does use 11 You're using 12 yep. and they've added, you'll see when you take the block away, you can see that the, the center, almost like a medallion is the same quilt. They've added a top row and a bottom row. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So look at how cool this is. And it really pulls that star motif out towards the corners. And I love everything about this quilt. I, I love know. the fabric, I love the binding. I just the love The minute she saw this sample, she fell in love and it that had was, to happen. That's why we're it making it. It happen. Okay, so let's start by, oh, before we start, Emily, do you have yes. questions? Well, actually, you, you, I have a, the perfect comment from Miss Darla who was, you know, we were just kind of talking about how versatile this pattern can be and, you know, could it make, you know, a quilt bigger such as a king sized? Oh, yes. You just can, keep going, just, as they say. Just keep <laughs> swimming, swimming, keep swimming. swimming. And Miss Pat S. is wondering, approximately how long did it take you guys to create one block? Any shortcuts okay. or tip, expert tips yep. to share? We're going to talk about gonna sewing talk them about. together next week. But here's, here's just a little heads up. We do two at a time. We sew two blocks. We sew two blocks at a time. Right. And you'll get faster as you go. Right. Part of the key to that is organizing your pieces, and we're going to talk a lot about that today as well. And I'm my big tip is cut all of your pieces first, because for us it's going to be scrappy, right? So we want to be able to go through and find different fabrics. Right. You want to be able to keep your mix different. Right. And we'll talk about different types that you're going to use. Yes. So do you have other questions before we lay some fabric down? Sure. Um, well, Paula was wondering, now she thinks she recalls, Pam, that you use your log cabin die to cut up the uh, scraps from each project and store them in bags. Is that right? I do. <sighs> so cool. We're going to talk about that. I do. Um, so the, that's not what I'm using for this project, but every time. So this is my go-to scrap busting die. You've been doing that for, for some time. For a Although long time. You have a new favorite. I do have a new favorite, but I still cut logs. Yes. So, cause sometimes I have a piece of fabric that's this big and sometimes it's right. this big. And so what I do is I find um, the largest log I can cut on the log cabin die, lay it down and cut it up. And then I store them in Ziploc bags. And pretty soon I have enough for a quilt. Love that. And I just think it's the best way to use up your scraps. So I think we're going to start by cutting our background fabric. Yes, let's do it. And then we're going to get in, we're going to show you how to cut those scraps because I know everybody's going to have questions on that. Nice. Okay, so now listen, Eric and I are going to change places. It's going to be something new. Because um, I'm going to cut she mine. She doesn't think I guess, very well. I guess I could cut you yours. You can cut mine. I'll okay. let you cut mine. Okay. I All right. trust you. So what I did... <laughs> um, I just measured because I'm cutting all the pieces, right? Okay. So I cut 23 okay, you've got inches your, with You've got a fabric. little bit of your salvage there, so you don't yeah. want that in your pocket. Okay. There you go. And, and um, note that we are very carefully laying this pair so that it follows the shape of that, those blades mm -hmm. on the, with the fabric. Yeah, and actually, not Erica, squaring it up. I'm going to use this one because this one is pressed. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. You, uh, you press your fabric first. Yes. Okay. Yes. Line up your salvage edges. Okay. And just barely come past the blades. And we can always cut six layers of cotton fabric. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring it right here to the edge, boy. And I'm just lining it up over my die, over the shapes on the die. Living on the edge. That's Living on the edge every day here at AccuQuilt. <laughs> And then I'm going to come back. There we go. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to use a I, um, 10 by 24 mat. Yes. This die will fit in our go in our go big. Yes. Okay. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And if you're using our strip die, our one and a half inch strip die, it also will fit in the go in the go big. Yes, that is correct. Okay. I feel like we should sing or something. We while should. We should. Runs through. So here. while that's, grab your Ziploc bag so that yes. we can. 
Great, oh yes, all those fun Ziplocs. I feel like Ziploc should give me a little kickback. <laughs> Not only do use I use them, generic, if you want. I know. I, okay, um, I'm going to give it love, and I'm going to slide because there are lots of blades and pieces and pieces in this die. Yes. So look at this. Okay. So do you want to do the? Yeah. Should we do the pull off here? Yeah. This do the, the big pull off part. reveal. Right. I just don't want to get anybody out of kilter here. Yep. And okay, look, if you have one little thread there, holy yep. smokes. There's one little thread. Let's just just clip, clip that in. thread. Right here. Those nice little Karen K. Buckley scissors. I love them. Oh my gosh. Things. They are lifesavers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and we have three different sizes of them now on our website and they're they're my favorite scissors of all time. Amen to okay. that. Okay. I didn't know I could become emotionally attached to scissors, but I have. <laughs> so look at this. Ta da ta da. Okay, so now look I have Ziploc bags and they're very high tech. They are marked one, two, <laughs> all the way to 12. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pieces from one and put it in here and give it a little clip because they're tiny, okay? Yes. And I'm just gonna go through and put them all in here. So when I tell you that we cut all the pieces first, this is why because it's just so much easier to take them off the die, put them in a Ziploc bag. Erica has a very clever way of storing hers. I do, I do. I was trying to work on different, well, we like to give you all ideas. So we, do. we, we work to come up with some different ideas. Okay, now once it gets to like shape number seven, my little bags aren't big enough, but so we might fold them in half here and, oh. Do you need a scissor? I need a scissor, I don't wanna pull. Well, and this, and this kind of helps with, with Lauren's debacle. She says she gets frustrated with Scrappy if there are two fabrics that happen to end up going together. Oh, I know. You, you, you. And so this, this tip of having all the different bags and being able to select, right. you know, you have right. them all there at your fingertips. Then you know. Exactly. Well, and we tend to go ahead and pick out um, pieces a couple at a time, too, as we're sewing those two blocks. Right. So, um, and if you make sure that your two are done. And if you have a little extra fabric, that way you can help yourself ensure that you don't have, you know, a, a, a problem at the end. Okay, now, I have a nice big bag to store my little bags in. Oh, I do too, I just didn't bring travels it. travels with me. Like, it's going home with me today because um, we're off for a couple of days and so, I think I'm gonna sew We're some. We're gonna sew some things. Log cabin blocks. So okay. I had gotten started but I didn't finish. So here we go. Okay. So I'm gonna cover mine up. Now, it's not, it's gonna cut, cut off the tip here at oh, this end, but that's care. okay because I don't need that for the size that right. I'm doing. So Erica actually subcut her fabric. I did. An inch shorter than I did mine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's my first, and I left my salvage edge on there. Are you gonna keep this? Because this is super I cute. I am, I am. Odor. It is. Um, I've talked about it before, but I wait, I have another layer. Oh. We're gonna put this to good use. Right, as long I, as I'm just having a good well, time. As long as we're cutting, we're gonna cut, a cut more right. than just two blocks. Okay, right. there. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Okay, remember you can cut up to six layers and that's exactly what I do every time. Yep. Okay. And we do have a question with, you know, with how they're laying on, um, on the die with, you know, how you had the selvage edge mm -hmm. when you laid out your fabric. So MJ wants to clarify. So when you're looking at the numbers right way up, the selvage is on the top. Yes, or the bottom. Or the bottom, perfect. Yeah, the top or the bottom, right. it just- The long way. The, the long way. The long way. Exactly, okay, perfect. Okay, Ooh, we've got a quick, couple like folks wondering about fat quarters, which we're I think we're gonna, gonna show talk. you. We're gonna talk about yes. that. Yes. We're gonna show you. Okay, we're gonna give it a love. We're gonna slide that mat because so many pieces. So here's my little board. Oh yes, here we go. Erica has this clever little way. So I went to my local dollar type store. Oh, whoops, hold on, I took all of your ones. Okay, and we're gonna flip this around so that you've got, I have the small piece because of how my board is. You can pin oh, yes. on one side and I can pin okay. on the other. So okay. Erica loves to pin things. Well, I think okay. this is clever. This is really clever. I like how this is working. So I just took a, a 
doll, a cheap piece of foam core, and I have, this is an excuse to use my cute pins. See, they're yeah, like cute bumblebees. <laughs> and I took a Sharpie and I wrote my numbers, and now I'm just gonna pin them on underneath the number. Okay, now, before we lay this down, remember, Erica's number 12 isn't the right size. So I'm just gonna take this and put it away from the board right. so that we don't think, oh, wait. And that's one of the things you need to remember, quilters. We're gonna talk about some ways to organize mm -hmm. is make sure that you're sewing the right size. That's right. Yes. Okay. So. And Jenny's wondering, Erica, what size did you subcut your fabric again? Was it 20? It was 22, 22 and a half, maybe. Whatever the pattern. Oh, here, I can six tell you. By six and a half. Perfect. I can tell you. Yes, it, it'll be in the, it will be in the, the pattern. 22 and a half. Perfect. Okay, yep. So this is a great pattern to just download. It's free. Ooh. Sorry, Erica, I was taking some. And I decided to do my... Oh, they have ducks or, oh, they're bumblebees. They're bumblebees. How and flowers. Cute. And little hearts. They were just so cute. Erica has way more... Um, they were a gift, and I love them. There you go. How clever is that? And I'm never going to just yank this fabric. I'm always going to no, cut no, those we're, two threads. We're gonna we're going to be careful with it because we love it. Mm -hmm. So... There we go. So the nice thing about this is I just stand it up next to the sew next to me on the floor, mm -hmm. and it's got all of my pieces, and I'll take off two of each size at a time as I'm going through and making my block, and that way I don't get disorganized. I think that's fabulous. So that's how that's how I've done those, and I'm keeping them separate from my colored pieces. Okay. So are we ready? So to wait. So underneath, do you pin more? Do you pin the no. colors? No, I'm, oh, she has another I have thing. another thing for the okay. colors. All right. So the lovely Eric and I are both using the same fabric for backgrounds. So hers is the same fabric, mine is the same fabric. Right. But you could totally make your background scrappy as well. Right. You could do all low volume mm -hmm. on one side and all right. really brights or darks on the other. Right. Or think about using just two colors. Right. Maybe even two colors and a red center, which, of course, is the classic log cabin block. So there's no quilt police. Use whatever colors you want. And you might want to just start in your sash and look at your scraps. I think that's a great way. So what should we do now? Should we cut some colors or well, should we cut some scraps or should we answer questions? Let's answer questions. Okay. Then we're going to cut some scraps and then Eric and I are going to cut our yardage. Yes. Okay. Well, actually, Robin would like to see like kind of, um, can you point out on the, um, perhaps on the quilt behind yeah. where the star motif comes into play or on the pattern? Oh, sure. Yes. Having trouble seeing the star sure. there. Hold, please. I will hold this up. Because this is the star. I don't have to stay back from it, but think about... Okay, well, think about this, if it wasn't all the strips as a flying geese, okay? Oh, yeah. So here's your star, here's your, so think about it almost like a sawtooth star. Exactly. Okay, like with your, with flying geese on either side and instead of a solid in the middle, we've got the box, which again creates a star effect. Gorgeous. Marsha wonders, um, do either of you square up after each block? Nope. Nope. Here's why. You're going to sew that quarter inch seam perfectly. Yep. You're going to press without steam. Yep. And you're just going to build it, and it's going to finish to 12 and a half inches at, or 11 and a half inches, and then it's going to be perfect. Yes. Well, yeah, which is perfect. Now, this is funny. Julie has remarks, you guys both quilt when you aren't working. Who does the cleaning and cooking at your house? No <laughs> one is the answer to that. If it happens, <laughs> it's me. No, yes. Um, because there is no one else besides the Riley dog, and so far, he yes. just contributes to the, to the mess. To the mess. The mess. <laughs> um, I do clean, and my husband is a great cook. And he, we do lots of meal prepping and stuff. But no, we really do so like for ourselves. The right. other day we were talking about that. I was like, I, I Eric, need to sew for I me. Need to sew for me. Yeah. 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 So that's a great question. Exactly. But any of you who would like to come and clean and cook for us, oh, we would we'd totally, be, absolutely. totally be down for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Emily, do you have more questions? Well, this is a fun one. Um, Lily is wondering, are there any dyes that, can, that you'd recommend um, for jelly roll strips? Oh, the two and a half inch strip die will cut jelly rolls for days. Item number 55017. Five, five, <laughs> um, or 55014 five, if you have the go me. me. 
That's right. Um, it's going to cut two and a half inch strips with the fabric, and you need typically 40 fabrics to make a jelly roll. Mm -hmm. Look at me doing math on a Wednesday. Woohoo! She's so right. proud of herself. It's so All cute. right, so let's cut some scraps because some of you are going to say, "Oh, well, I have this box of scraps." Oh, yes. What am I going to do? Okay. So I literally grabbed a bunch of scraps. Now I did press them because some of them were um, they were icky. Yeah, pretty pretty uh, rumpled up. Okay, so here's what you want to do. You want to find that lengthwise grain. Look, nice and tight. Yep. Hear it. This is wonky. Low and wonky. High and tight, okay? <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I am going to lay this down on my die and I'm gonna see which log is the biggest log that, that I can cut. cut. With this fabric. And I can cut a four inch log, okay? So I'm gonna lay my fabric like that. Right. Okay, and, oh here, let's do this one. Oh, here, we're gonna do a wider one because then I'm gonna show them how to do a wider one. Yeah. Okay, here. Okay, do you not spend your whole life <laughs> doing that? I do that all the time. Okay, I'm gonna turn it this way because yes. now I'm gonna show you a trick. Yes. Okay, so see here, shape number six. six. Okay, so I can go back and forth just twice. Okay, because it's, it's too short for the other way. Right. So I'm actually gonna lay it like this. Right. And I'm gonna show you the most magical thing and all of you will go, uh oh. Don't forget our videos live on our Facebook page. Yes. So you can come back and watch this. Okay, Erica, it's only gonna cut where there's fabric, fabric and, and mat. mat. Mat makes the magic. So look at this. So I'm gonna take a smaller mat, a six by 12 mat, Mm -hmm. And since I have my fabric past this blade, right. and past this blade, I just want to cut it right here on number six. Right. So I'm going to put it between the, and you can see, if you wanted to, you could take a Sharpie, like a right. silver Sharpie. Right, you could Sharpie. take a silver Sharpie or a darker Sharpie, yeah. depending on the color of your foam. Watch this. And all of you are all stressed, because you're thinking, what, it's cutting here. Don't stress. Don't stress. Don't stress. <laughs> This is one of my very best favorite tricks because when I'm cutting scraps at home, this is exactly what I do. Right. Give it some love, slide, don't lift. Now look at this. We've cut perfect strips. So look. So now we've cut two of number six. And I'm taking these home. And two of number four. But look. Now we've I, got some more real estate here to work yeah, with. Yeah. Exactly. Right? So now we're gonna do the same thing again. Let's see what we can do. We've we can got probably get four. Get four. Number four again. Yeah. So now I can go like this. Okay, and then if I had bigger scraps, um, then I could come down here to 10 or nine or 12. Right. I try really hard, Eric, and I, I know you do as well, not to get the ones next to each other. Right. Because it's just a little tough, okay? Right. So now I'm going to put this mat back on. And this just really goes to show how this die in, in particular maximizes that fabric. This like, you know, die is really versatile. And when you have now, and I'm thing. not just going to get rid of my extra scraps that I had from when Pam cut my background, because I'm probably going to use those in my, to piece my backing together. Right. So right. now I've cut more of these of four. So we could go on and cut these so for days. So we cut that scrap these. down and we've got one, two, yep. I mean, so many pieces. Okay, now hold on. Somewhere, you, oh, here you now, go. Now some of you are gonna think about using pre-cuts. Right, so here's the thing about pre-cuts. This is a 10 inch cut mm -hmm. block. And so pre-cuts aren't always picture perfect. They're on not. Their size. And you really want it to be because look, if I if I'm cutting mean right here to the blade, look, it's not coming right here. So I could So you could cut your nine. Yes. For days. But for but you couldn't cut a ten because right. the ten is actually ten and a half. Right. But you could cut your eights and your sevens but again, just keep that in mind that pre-cuts, you have to find the lengthwise green. Right. And then you have to use it, okay? So then if you have a fat quarter. No, if you have a charm, a charm square. 
it's going to be perfect for four and a half inches. Right. Or you could do, look, right here, and then it's going to cut three, two, and, and one. one. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, I have a trick. Hold, please. Yes. Oh, this is one of my all-time favorite tricks. Okay, so you could use that. We have so much scraps, Erica, I gotta keep track of them. I know. <laughs> okay. And if you were doing this with like, say a two color block, you could probably just lay, you know, one layer of each the key color. The is to keep your colors and your numbered pieces separate. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So then we can take these pieces and sub cut them again. That's what? left over from our little Oh yes. Door. Okay, okay, so there's ones and twos and then we could cut more twos. More twos, or more one. Right, so keep that in mind. And I'm also gonna tell you that if you're just cutting two colors, you just wanna, if you're doing 11 and a half blocks, just do with the fabric, go mm -hmm. back six times. Mm -hmm. So, and then just take your little one and a half inch strip, two right. inch strip and then fan fold however many blocks you're gonna make. Right, now if you're using a strip die or if you're rotary cutting, your lengthwise grain, you are gonna be able to cut with the fabric strips to go across your die and I can't remember, I think the one and a half cuts five. It does cut five. And so measure a quarter inch over and cut with the fabric. You can lay it square on the die. Why? Because strip dies do not have any crosswise blades mm -hmm. in them. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna have to take your ruler and your rotary cutter and cut those down to one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, and so on. Okay. All right, are we good for a minute? We're good for a minute. Speaking of straight of grain, this, this question that Gloria has kind of ties into it. Does the selvage always go on the side at the label like we yes. cut earlier yes. or the opposite side? Yes. It does, as long as it goes along as the edge. Right, so it could be the label, it could be the opposite. It's in fact the same thing. Now let's talk, should we talk selvage edge yeah, for just a quick, minute? Yeah, because our good friend sent these to us. So what is her name? Mary Ellen Perry sent these and she knows that I collect salvages she and does. she collects salvages. So she sent this box of salvage edges to me. Aww. So is that not the, isn't that the cutest? That, Mary, that, Ellen that is so fabulous. sweet. So, so I'm thinking you'd want to line it up right with the edge of that blade. Of that blade. Now you're going to have your seam allowance. You're going to lose a little bit of the the design on here, but you absolutely could use this and do a salvage quilt, a salvage log cabin block. And, hold please, remember it's only gonna cut where there's fabric and a mat. Right. So I could use a skinny mat if I have my go big. Right. And I could cut all of these pieces. Right. As well. There okay. you go. I think it's fabulous. Thank you, Mary Ellen. Thank you. This is fun. And she had them like together by projects. I can tell, like this is Kansas Trail. That this was organized. all from a project together. Yes, it's just dark. Mine are not like that. Mine are like jammed into a jar. Okay, so before we, oh, okay. So should we talk more about how we're gonna organize our pieces or should we cut our colors? Cut some colors, Pam. Put okay, I wanna show you this because this was really important. Um, and you're use, you had half yard cuts. I did that you have were half yard cuts with. that I just love. Okay, so here's the thing, quilters. All of you should just be thinking in your quilting head, oh my gosh, I just need to cut log cabin blocks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I made sure I pressed all of those half yard cuts. And that was good of you. Okay, so look at this, quilters. See, it's not big enough to cut all exactly. of my pieces, right? But what did we just learn from the lovely Erica? That it's only gonna cut where there's fabric and a mat. Right. Okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here mm -hmm. to cut this section. Right. And then I'm gonna have a whole big chunk of scraps. Right. And then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna cut okay. the next section. section. Okay? Mm. So it's going to, I'm just gonna have big chunks of scraps when it's done, mm -hmm. but I'm okay with that. Right, Okay. And she has a plan for them. Well, because it came from my stash and what do I care? Right. Right? Okay, so I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna fold this up here. I did six layers. Okay. Found my lengthwise screen. Okay. 
and I'm, you know what, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna, gonna send do it my mat through first. Hold okay. here. I'm gonna do this side first. Okay. And Whatever is gonna make mat. you happy. Oh my gosh, nobody says that to I me. I don't say that to her all the time. No, either. she doesn't. She's kind of bossy about what we do. So <laughs> whatever I want to do are never words you that- say that like you're not bossy about what we do. <laughs> so much of us are bossy. They're laughing at us because we truly are Lucy and Ethel. same brain. Yeah. <laughs> are you not entertained? <laughs> yeah, watch out. You're gonna be the one spilling this time. Yeah, oh smelling my drink. Eric has spilled in the studio this morning. There's a big rule about you can't. <laughs> but we could get dry. We could start to cough. It, it is bad. really dry in here. Okay, slide that mat. Don't lift. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now I have this big chunk. Hold on. Okay, now yes. then. Would you like me to pull these off? Yeah, very, we're just going to put them in. So then the next chunk I do, 12, I'm going to do the 11, same thing. 11, 10, 9. Okay. I'm going to do this like this. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So does everybody understand? See, then I just have a big chunk over here. Yes. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just think about how you want to manipulate your fabric. Right. And you could flip this. If you want to see what you're doing, you could go like this. Yes. So that you don't have to worry about it so much. Yes. Okay. A good old cut and flip. Yes. Cut and flip. Okay, so you just want to make sure it's to the center line. Yes. Holy smokes. Okay. And I'm going to put my mat here. It's like confetti, Erica. <laughs> Okay, so one of the things I'm doing this year, and this was from one of our go-getters who goes by Sam Rhymes with Ham on Instagram. <laughs> Sam Rhymes with Ham is which the is best. The best. Um, she takes those clear plastic uh, Christmas ornament. ornament balls and she, cra she puts her scraps from each project into yeah. a ball. So all these little pieces like this, all this little fun batik confetti you can scram it into. And I have a little Christmas tree in my basement, which is actually almost full. <laughs> is it really? It's April. Um, the cutest idea. That I have them hanging off of. It's like the old school silver metallic. Oh, how okay. sweet. So look, I manipulated it so I have big chunks of scraps. Yes. Don't be willy nilly. Okay, right. when you're cutting, don't be willy nilly. Okay, well, you hold, can please. be, but well, you can be, but I just feel like if you're, you're doing that, okay, hold please, because now we have to now put them we back have to put them back. Because oh my goodness, <laughs> one time, one time, I thought, oh, I don't need to do that. All right, so while we put these back, Emily, do we have more questions? We sure do, and these are kind of like general, you know, um, housekeeping questions about the dyes, etc. Okay. So we were doing this a little bit earlier, but Amy was wondering how do we best clean the threads out that get stuck oh, in those dyes? We have a dye pick. I <laughs> we gouged Erica with it this morning. <laughs> Hold on, we'll show you. Uh, Things get just wild in the studio. They sure is it do. not here just this morning? Well, I gave it to you. You were using it. I know it's somewhere around here. Oh, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> okay, hold on. Hold. Okay, listen. We got to put these away. We have to put these away first. <laughs> so here's. We're gonna get one, to that question. Two, three. Let's go from the short end. Okay. And while this we're this is a process. Boy. While we're sorting, I have a good question that we can answer while we're sorting. Okay, oh, Emily knows the answer. That's best. About how so Lynette's wondering typically how many cuts you can get out of the dyes. Oh, and how that's many? It's going to be thousands of cuts. Yeah. I mean, what's going to wear out, Emily? Those cutting mats and yep. the way that you'll t that you can tell that those cutting mats are you know just it's time to say goodbye. Um, yeah. is that you're not going to get those 100% perfect cuts anymore. You're, right. You might have more threads kind of, you know, hanging on. Um, and so that's the time where you can say, all right, sayonara, let's get us a new a new cutting mat. Yep. So, yep, that's a great Rule idea. of thumb, if you can see daylight through the cracks in your mat, replace it. Yeah. Yes, if there, are sh if there are shreds coming out of them, then you are definitely in need of yes. new ones. <laughs> They're coming apart okay. as you try to cut. So somebody asked earlier how, many, how long it took to cut your pieces. Right, so this is my, our big tip, right, is you want to cut your pieces first. I don't know, if Eric and I didn't talk, I could have cut <laughs> we all We could have been done. We could have been done like 29 minutes ago. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you that probably, I don't know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes to cut, as long as it's ready and prepped and, fat and ironed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So here's oh, wait, a, here. 
Ah. I got this whole place. <laughs> so you can always use a um, lint roller brush. Oh, yes. But here's our die pick. Yeah. And you just want to go in and you don't, you want to be careful that you're not picking away your foam, that yeah. you're getting rid of the thread. And I find it useful to have a pair of tweezers handy as well, because if you start picking those out with your fingernails, you're going to come up with little slits in your fingernails, because you know what? Those blades are sharp. Yeah. Sure. So a lint roller brush, take off yes. those strings. It also cleans off your shirt. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now you can go and do your fabric. I was getting fabric... Pr I had done some cutting already and I was getting fabric ready and I realized I had cut this too long, but that's okay because I'm gonna, you know, make use of my scraps. And I hadn't pressed it because this was the end of the end of the line for this piece. Oh, the end of the bolt. The end of the bolt. It's not like it was, it. No, 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 no. Because <laughs> I had found I had a little schmutz on my Oh yes, on the I end don't of know the bolt. What happened here? So when I cut, I'm gonna cut like this fabric and I'm gonna cut not this part of the fabric because I don't want the, <laughs> the marks on my beloved quilt. Okay. All right, so give that a, put a mount we'll just on take top. that color through the whirl. Okay, and then Erica's gonna show you how she keeps track of her color pieces. So this is what I've been doing. So I got this little art bin when I was doing, see, diagram for my box, when I was making my temperature quilt. I finished the first of March. Oh, perfect. I finished the top. Let's not get confused with that actually being quilted. <laughs> so I had all my different colors for the different temperatures in here. And one thing I really like about this is these little dividers come out. This is an embroidery file, You can right? use this for like embroidery floss, but you can also use it for other things. Like I said, I had it divided up to use for half score triangles last year. And now I just kind of divided them up with, took out the dividers so that I can use my pieces. And then I put little tape down little numbers that are kind of coming up. But so again, I've got the numbers right there and I'm keeping my scrappiness here and my background, my solid over on the board. Oh, that's genius. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm good. So nine. And then I'm just gonna go in here, and there's my 10. I, I know, right? And my eight. Ooh, Rhonda's wondering, do y'all mix your materials, like cotton and flannel for in I typically don't. No. I would put like a flannel backing on a log cabin quilt. Right. That'd be cozy. Yeah, I don't mind mixing my, my uh, finished. finished front and back, but I don't typically do a whole lot. Now, I, the, the exception to that is I do really like that Essex linen. Six. Yes. Right there. Look at you trying to count It's that kind of woven look. And I will mix that with regular quilting cotton because I love it for backgrounds because it's got that kind of that shot cotton mm -hmm. uh, woven look. But usually I wouldn't do like a cotton and the flannel unless I'm doing it for like an applique. Like I would do cotton and then maybe use. Right. So we have the Northwoods medley dye, yeah. which has the bear and the trees and that. I just think it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. And so you could cut those out of flannel and applique them yeah. to your log cabin yeah. quilt. Yeah. That way I solid. would mix it. That'd be cool. Yeah, that's a great idea. All right. So one last idea we have is to use silverware organizers from the dollar store. Yes. So just like Erica did, you would mark, you know, one, two, three, four, five, all the way to 11 or 12 right. and just lay those strips. So quilters, if you have other ideas for storing your pieces, be sure to share them with us on the AQS Project Parade group. It's quilting, a pro quilting Project Parade group. On Facebook. AQS Quilting Project Parade group on Facebook. Yes. If you're not a member, join, because Eric and I are interacting with the group during this quilt along, and we'd love to see your fabric and storage ideas. You can look for Erica as AccuQuilt Educator, AccuQuilt Erica. AccuQuilt Erica. And I'm AccuQuilt Educator Pam Heller. Yes. Okay. All right, Emily, do we have any final questions? Because we've cut some fabric and we've stored some fabric. Well, well, Ms. Ms. Joey is asking um, about Emmett, the, our, that we've got a little fighter going on in the background, who's our, our little mascot here. Yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> Emmett, um, Emmett's uh, 
in battle today. Here, I'm going to bring yes. him a sewing machine next week. Emmett is here. He's in battle mode. Um, Emmett is, he's getting the TIE fighter. So I feel like there's <laughs> a cause. But, um, just so you know, every live show, Emmett is on the show. He is our mascot from the Lego movie because everything is awesome. awesome. And so he is on every show, so you should look for him always on the set. Yeah. Sometimes he's hanging on dies, and sometimes he's hidden a little bit. Well, yeah. But today he's just outright fighting TIE fighters. Yep. Yeah. So. You never know where he's going to show up. Yeah. Never know, or what he'll be up to. Yes. And then I think our final of the question of the day should be, what do we do with our old mats? Oh, so you can recycle them here in Nebraska. You can put them in your recycle bin. Um, but if you're using the 6 by 12 mats... Oh, this right here? Yes. These fit perfectly in the bottom of shopping bags. Your, um, mm -hmm. you know, cloth right. shopping bags. Yeah. I've heard some other ideas. Now, you're going to have to check and see if they recycle where you live. Yes, but here in Nebraska, um, they do. But you could also use them in the bottom of a purse or some kind of a cloth mm -hmm. purse bag. like that, a tote bag. I've heard people use them like in the bottom of a bird cage or something to pull oh. out and yeah. dump or... Yeah. Um, I'm sure you could come up with other ideas for Here's them as well. what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to take a 6 by 12 cutting mat and chop it up into a smaller mat and try and use the edges. Because what happens yeah. is once you cut this, it loses its integrity. Okay? It's, it's cut like this for a reason. Right. And so get you a new mat if you do that it's actually not good for the mat it's actually yeah. gonna it's, it's gonna, gonna ruin the entire and yeah. ruin it so yeah. um we sell a six by six mat for a reason yeah and a six by twelve and so forth yeah okay. all right quilters for more tips and tricks on this section of the go scrappy log cabin quilt check out today's blog post called 2023 aqs and accu quilt along series scrappy star log cabin part one <laughs> written by the lovely words. Erica. We used as many letters. All of our alphabet. good words. Mm -hmm. All of our good words. <laughs> Erica wrote it. It's amazing. Thank you, Miss Bam. Now, along with my blog post for today, I also have one that introdu introduced the series earlier. Mm -hmm. That was on the 22nd. And it included the schedule of each part of this quilt along. It included those rotary cutting directions or strip die cutting directions. And I'll be writing more for each remaining section. But the key is no matter how you are cutting your project, you still want to print out or at least download your directions, yes. your printed directions for the, the assembly. Yes, okay? it's a free pattern on the AccuQuilt website. That's right. All right, and then while you're there, be sure to subscribe to the AccuQuilt blog so you don't miss a single tip or exclusive tutorial. That's right. Now, before we end part one of our quilt along for the Ghost Scrappy Star Log Cabin Quilt, we want to announce the winner of today's giveaway. Uh, let's do it. All right, the lucky winner of $100 in AccuQuilt reward points is, drum roll please. <laughs> Carolyn E. of Cleveland, Georgia. Congratulations, Carolyn. <laughs> All right. Now, don't forget that we've got plenty of special offers available for you on our website. What do you, you have a block for? Uh, from yesterday. I, oh, right here. I did. Oh, good. Okay. Including? Including the new um, April Dye to Try, which is the Go Full Blown Tulip Dye. It's yes. available on our website through the month of April or until we sell out. That's right. Or from your local AccuQuilt retailer. To get your order in now, open a new tab in your browser. Type in AccuQuilt.com slash party to see the current deals and place your order. All right. It is time for us to go get ready for the next show. We hope that today's tips and tricks were just what you needed to get started on the Go Scrappy Star Log Cabin Quilt. Just a reminder, again, we want you to go ahead and join that Facebook group. It's the AQS Quilting Project Parade Facebook group. And when you post, we forgot to say this, yes. be sure you use hashtag AQSOS. S-E-W-S. S-E-W-S. So A-Q-S-E-W-S whenever you post a picture. Okay? Because then Eric and I, we can go in and search mm -hmm. by that hashtag right. and we can make comments and see what you're doing. And I'm if, excited. And if you're things. posting on Instagram or something, you can do the same thing. Yes. We don't have a group on Instagram, but yes. go ahead and post there. Yes. I'll post there as well. And again, you can search by that hashtag. So you can see what everybody's doing. I'm That's excited. Right. All right, quilters, we'll see you next time. 
Thanks so much for watching. To learn more about your quilting craft, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can check out the events page on the AccuQuilt website for more details on upcoming shows. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, visit our blog for exclusive tutorials filled with tips and tricks. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Check out our events page and enter your email to register for upcoming events. You'll receive an email reminder for each show. Registering for each event means that you're entered to win a door prize that we'll give away during a show. Be sure to join me every Wednesday at 12 noon Central Time for AccuQuilt Live. We always have tons of fun. Next week, the lovely Erica is joining me and we're going to be sewing our log cabin blocks. And join us every Tuesday at 12 noon Central Time for launch parties and trunk shows. These events are filled with more tips, tricks, and inspiration. Next time, we'll be having a scrappy show. We hope to see you there. And if you'll be at the Quilt Show in Paducah later this month, AccuQuilt is hosting the lounge. Stop by and say hi.